Is you're the team leader, I'm, I'm assuming, correct? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> humble guy, humble. Why don't you guys go around and just introduce yourself real quick? Okay. My name's Johnny. Harry. <laughs> How about you? I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Five years. Yeah. You two use that one. Come use that Come on, don't make them. Okay. <laughs> right, can we turn these on? Turn these on? All right, so we just got some duct tape on the bottom, and that's how we do it over here. Okay, cool. Do you got it? All right, just pass this. Go ahead. Tank. Ryan. Hey, you see how cool these guys are? They're so cool, man. I said introduce yourself. I meant, like, tell them a little bit about yourself, and you were just like, Tank. That's all we do. Like Johnny. Like, man, Put some oomph into it, huh? All right, so let me ask you guys a question, man. How did you guys come up with the way? Does that have any special meaning to it? Anyone want to answer that? Uh, well, <laughs> one of my favorite Bible verses, uh, John, now I'm drawing a blank. It's when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, and he says, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Um, that one has always stood out to me because it's so profound. I think when Jesus says he's the truth, People don't emphasize that enough. That without the truth, we're lost. There's nothing, there's no such thing as good, there's no such thing as bad, there's no such thing as right, and no such thing as wrong if there's no truth. Jesus is that truth. He was the truth in the beginning when he created the universe. He's the truth now, and he'll always be the truth. He's the thing that holds reality together. So that, Woo! So, Jesus is the way, him is he himself. So we just want to try to be like that. We want to reflect that. We want people to think of him when uh, they think of us. That's awesome. Woo! That's awesome, man. How did, how did the four of you guys meet? Did you guys meet in church or you guys knew each other in the world before you came to Jesus? Or how did you guys become together? How did you guys know, like, this is the band, this is the group, like, let's do this? When, when, when was that? Well, um... I know Ryan and Johnny actually were in a band together. Well, you guys weren't locked up together or nothing? <laughs> no. It was no, 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 no. not. But uh, they, they were in a band for like, what, 10 years? Something like that? And, um, we're old. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> but uh, in, in the aftermath of that band falling apart, um, Ryan, Tank, and myself formed another band. And then in the aftermath of that band, Johnny asked us if we wanted to play. And the rest is history, pretty much. You know, we've been together ever since. Awesome, awesome, man. What, uh, this, this is kind of an individual question for all four of you. Um, if you guys could just touch on it lightly. Uh, what brought you guys to Jesus Christ? Like, what was that day that snapped in your head where you said, you know what, I'm serving Jesus for the rest of my life and faithfully? Um, I pretty much grew up in church. My, my dad was a worship leader, as long as I can remember. But it didn't become real to me. Like I didn't really get it. It was, it was all it was was just something I did with my family, going to church and stuff. And up until I was like in junior high and started kind of thinking, you know. And that's a, right about then is when it, it clicked for me, you know. When I would be like how you guys are with your friends at youth group and stuff. I used to go and it's good. It's good that you guys are doing that. You guys are building lifelong, eternally long relationships and um, they're, they're not just going to last till you die, they're going to go on forever because you're going to be with Jesus with us. So um, I didn't start realizing those types of things till I was about in junior high and that's when I decided to get baptized and that's when it became real to me. So, awesome, awesome. Man. I actually, uh, I didn't, you know, I'm kind of the exact opposite of Johnny, I didn't grow up in the church at all. Um, you know, my family and I, we would go once a month, if that, but, um, you know, it, I believed in God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. And because of that, I kind of grew up, you know, with this self-delusion that when someone was angry at me, they hated me. And it actually drove me to attempt to kill myself a couple times. And I thank God each and every day that I failed because it was, uh, Summer of my sophomore year in high school, I was hanging out with Johnny and his old band, 
and they were playing a song that their guitar player had written called Victory. And I just remember thinking like throughout the whole song, like, this is a really cool song, you know, real jamming. And then they sung one line where it says, as the scales fell down from my eyes, I knew that you would never leave. I am not abandoned, never alone. And just, I just felt this overwhelming presence of love just come over me. And I literally fell to my knees and started crying. And right then and there, I decided to serve Jesus with all that I am. Um, that's powerful, huh? um, just to piggyback on you know, what he said real quick, it's funny because they're doing a study right now in schools and high schools and stuff, and I think it's close to 80% of kids are killing themselves, uh, committing suicide by cutting themselves and doing all kinds of crazy things, um, doing shootouts in schools and it's funny because by committing suicide, they think that it's a way out, a way out of you know my problems and my issues in life and et cetera, et cetera. But really, you know what it is? It's a way in, it's a way into hell. And so that's what we have to be real careful of. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that, you know, like, but uh, anyways, enough of me, we're here for the way. <laughs> uh, well, like Johnny, I grew up in going to church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I grew up going to churches and youth group and junior high and then about high school I just, you know, I started going a different way because it wasn't cool. I wanted to be a different, I had a different image and, and after high school just got into drinking a lot and um, just went my own way. I always knew, oh, one day I'll go back to God, one day when I'm like late 40s or something when I'm done partying and doing my thing and then about five, I'm 31, maybe 32, but about five years ago, God uh, really like, hit my heart big time. I said, nah, now you're coming back. And uh, it's been still kind of a struggle, like drinking off and on. And honestly, the last three and a half months I was the, the longest I've ever gone without it, and I've never seen my life so blessed. Mm -hmm. God is blessing everything I'm doing right now. And I mean, he, he's done before when I stop, but then I go back and screw up. And then, uh, but this is like, I'm just seeing at work uh, with, with girls, with, uh, with different things, just, just favor all around. And I want, I want to tell you guys, don't waste those, those years that I wasted because you can, you can have that, like, I'm barely living life right now. You can be doing that from now until, you know, you, until eternity, like Johnny said. Not a bunch of years of being depressed and anxiety, because it happens when you're a teenager, but God's going to get you through it, not music, not your homies, not this or that. Jesus is the only thing that gets me through it, and I've had a struggle, and then right now, this is like barely living my life right now. And don't waste your time when you get into high school. Just right now, what you're learning, just keep with it. Like Johnny said, Jesus is the truth. Not that music out there that kept me in a hopeless, a hopeless spot. But Jesus, and you know what, now you guys got it easy. There's all kinds of good Christian rappers and rockers like us, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, celebrities and stuff that they're there to encourage you. It was a lot different when I was like, there, but I guess I've always been there, but don't waste your time like I did. I mean, God's always going to, once you're saved, God's always going to bring you back. And if he tells you to come back and you say, no, nah, I'm not ready, he's going to bring you back and you're going to back hard. He's going to break your heart. You don't want that. You don't want that. So just, uh, just be obedient now. Start now. Live your lives now. From now until eternity, you're going to Jesus. Powerful, powerful. I think this is a, um, Like I said, my name is Ryan. Um, I'm not much of a speaker, but long time ago, I didn't grow up going to the church. You know, my family's not religious. And I met Johnny years ago when I was probably like, I don't know, 15, 14. I'm 32 now, so. Um, because of Johnny, he encouraged me to get into God and go to church. And then it was like, Eight years ago, nine years ago, probably, is when I really started going to church. You know, Johnny's dad was a pastor, and and then I, I came to God and decided to get baptized because God loves us. And, you know, I've had up and downs, and everybody has it. So God's blessed my life so much. You know, I have a beautiful wife, and I have a beautiful daughter. <laughs> I hope one day that my, my daughter will get to know God, like all of us. She, she will. You stay faithful. She's oh, yes. going to know God. Most definitely. I'm the only one that, that was a Christian before I met Johnny, I guess, up here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. What we're going to do now, Brother Mondo, if you could run up here quick, quick, quick. Uh, we're going to take some questions from the audience. 
Uh, anybody here has a question or two that you guys want to ask the way? Raise your hand. Anybody have a question? And Brother Mondo's going to come to you with the mic. Anybody have a question? Anybody? 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 What's, what's okay? I know I was like going once, twice. Go ahead, brother. What's, and can you stand when you ask that question if you don't mind? Hey, can you put the spotlight on them? And no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. What's your question, brother? Uh, how is uh, being like a rock and roll band and things like that tempted your kind of like things you're not supposed to do like outside of God? Like, have you guys ever did shows that were just maybe not Christian based, but like uh, maybe like more rock and roll based? And how that life has affected or tempted you? I've been playing this kind of, I'm old, okay, I'm 35. I've been playing this kind of music since I was about 17. I'm really old. <laughs> since I was about 17. And I've always been in Christian punk bands, but the majority of the shows we've done are secular shows, especially with this band. This band has gone farther than all my other ones. Um, like doing this for you guys is like a breath of fresh air to me. It's, honestly, it's rare for us. We usually play bars, nightclubs. And we try to be an example to those people out there. So there are temptations, you know, um, whether it be people offering us alcohol or, you know, crazy females, they just gotta blow off. Um, yeah, blow them off, guys. Um, but we just, the, the, it, like anything else in life, what you wanna do in, your quiet time is pray and read the word. And that equips you to handle anything because God won't let you, he says in his word, he won't let you in over your head. He'll always provide you a way out. So we apply that with this music too, you know. So thank you for letting us play here. We love it. This isn't like this isn't normal for us. It's a good Christian show. Okay. See, and what's awesome about that, too, is, you know, Jesus, he wasn't chilling with the kings and all that. He was chilling with the drug addicts, the killers, the prostitutes, and all that stuff. And that's where the Christians really need to be. Because church, it's so easy to play church in church, but the real church is when you're out there, outside these four walls, being the example for God. That's the real church. So, but, uh, any other questions real quick? Try to calm it down a little bit out there in the audience. Uh... Man, you guys, man, get some energy in you. What's up? We got Red Bulls for everybody? All right, what's up? Do you ask a question, bro? Of the, of the songs that you play, which one has the most meaning for you? That's a good question, man. That is a, uh, let's take the next question. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Right? I mean, who wants to answer that? Who wants to answer that? Are, are you speaking from like an individual standpoint or like as a band wise? Uh, as a band. Um, uh, it's it's kind of tough because I don't know the lyrics to any of our songs. I just put the bass. That's why he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> um, I know, it, it's We're kinda, a Christian band. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's kind of tough to really pick one because each song really has its own meaning and depth to it. Um, but um, I I would say from the once tonight probably the fight is ours. Um, that was the first song we played, um, and just just like the name of the song suggests, the fight is ours in Jesus Christ. That's what the whole song is about, is just basically saying, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do what God wants me to do without fear of the enemy or of the world, because the war is already won. We're out here to fight battles, but the war is already finished. So sorry. Oh, go ahead. Touch, touch. Actually, the rest of us would probably say precious in life because we have families and kids, and Harry doesn't, and that's about trying to raise a family and trying to work hard every day. So the rest of us would choose that one. But that was the second song. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? What's up, brother? I'm an old man here, but I really love what you play. My question is, is that in the secular clubs that you played in, has anybody ever come up and asked for, like, Wanting to get saved, how can I go and follow you, you know, follow so that I could be saved? Um, it's happened before where I didn't even bring up to this one girl one time uh, anything about being a Christian band. And we usually don't. We usually don't, hey, we're, you know, Jesus, blah, blah, in the bar. We just, we 
what we normally do is we try to lead by example. You know, we 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 keep everything clean as far as language and stuff, and we we just try to show love. But this one time, this uh, girl, a woman, lady, she uh, <laughs> we on our, our first CD we used to have. Actually, it was a guy. Yeah. It was a dude, wasn't it? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even there. <laughs> the Bible verse that I quoted was on there. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So um, this girl, girl was asking uh, or looking at her CD, and I said, do you know what, what that verse is? And then and I told her what it was, and she's like, oh, that sounds nice. You know, <laughs> she was just clueless. And I said, do you know what that means? And then um, she's like, no. And I gave her the explanation that I told you guys in the beginning about truth and about um, Jesus being here for you, sent by the Father and stuff. And all of a sudden, in the bar, and loud music, she just started crying, you know? And then she starts telling me, and I never met this girl, she starts telling me about, like, family problems and stuff. And I, I said a prayer for her, and I, I offered, like, an email address to keep in contact. She never kept in contact with me, but that was, like, a testament to me of how powerful one sentence of God's word is. It's alive and it, it touches people. It's like a sword, the Bible says, and it cuts through all the mess into your heart. And just being used by God in that one moment, to me, like I'll never forget it. And, and uh, I still wonder about her, I hope she's okay, you know. Um, I wish that she would have contacted me, but it's okay because God's with her and our prayers can still be an effect in her life through him, so. We got time for one more question. One more question. One more question. What's up, G? What's you, what's you got? Go ahead. Hey. <laughs> I just want to ask a question just for the back. Sorry, no, it's not a Christian <laughs> question. I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. That is. <laughs> handle, handle, bro. Okay. Well, yeah, security? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Have you ever guys tried, like, harder rock, like, screamo? Like, have you heard of the band uh, ADTR? And did you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever tried that kind or no? No, because we're all grown ups. So. <laughs> 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 actually, I listen to that band a lot, so. That's his, that's his, uh, I actually listen to a lot of hardcore, but I play yeah. punk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get to scream, you can sing. I can't sing like that, you know, I can't. <laughs> but no, you know. We tried to sell out. The, the, kind of, the kind of music that, that I write, you know, what you hear up here, I was influenced by bands that, like, when I was in high school, like, 20 years ago. So. <laughs> but um, so I mean, we, as far as our punk rock goes, it's an older style. So, but I mean, not not to knock anybody else. Everybody could do their thing, you know. Johnny, ain't Johnny on swole status? I'm like, what does this guy do, bro? I'm like, <laughs> that's what's the more you read the Bible, you get both like that. So. <laughs> it's like, it's like Steve Austin, man. Let's give it up one more time for the way. <laughs> 